Hi. So, hi everyone. Sorry for the late. Yeah. And so, this is the about the June project update, and I possibly give a brief introduction of us. And um, the, my name is Hong Bing Lu from Huawei, and I'm the PDR of this project. And want to. I'm Madhuri Kumari from Intel. I work as a co reviewer in this project. I'm Shu Muto. I'm implementing Zoom UI from NEC. Thank you. So, uh, I've, so, this, so this is our agenda of today. So we will have a general introduction of what is container on OpenStack. And then I will talk about the basics of the Zoom project and the internals and other things. And then we will show a demo. So, mother, we will take this part. Okay, thank you, Hongbin. Yeah, so containers on OpenStack. So, container evolution start in OpenStack started in the year 2014. OpenStack team felt the importance of supporting containers as they support uh, VMs on OpenStack. Since then, many projects have evolved, and there has been several projects which are trying to run containers on OpenStack, and some of them are using containers to make uh, OpenStack operations simpler. So we have a kind of like different kind of infrastructure where we can run our containers on OpenStack. So this shows like how can we run our containers on OpenStack. By that, I mean like on what level our containers can run. So for example, in this diagram, we are running our containers on the same level where we run our VMs. So that means like um, we will have a compute node where our container runtime would be running, and then uh, we can host our container on that compute host. And either we can also uh, run our hypervisors for running VM on that same compute node, and we can run our VMs uh, parallel to the containers on any compute node. So this example is basically done by Zun today. So we run our containers on a, sim on a compute host. So the second one is uh, the different deployment, which shows like we can run our containers inside VM. So for here, it means our Nova VMs would be running the container runtime tool, which uh, is used to manage these containers. So it means like on the compute host, we run the hypervisor, and then we launch VMs on that uh, compute host, and inside that VM, we'll have uh, the container runtime tool running, and after that, we host our containers inside this VM. So this is basically uh, done by, I can say, Murano today. Murano launches uh, v Nova VM ho ho nodes, and then it runs applications inside these VMs. So this one is the third uh, deployment scenario which we can use for running containers on OpenStack. In this one, uh, we run COEs on the Nova VMs. So by this, I mean like we'll have a compute host where we run our uh, no hypervisor and then launch some VMs on that compute host. And inside compute host, we'll have our container orchestration engine. That can be Kubernetes, Mesos, and Swamp, which is uh, used to manage your container applications. Uh, and we can have multiple uh, VMs that uh, manages your COE cluster. For example, in Kubernetes, we can have a master node and slave node or any combination which is suitable for uh, as per the customer's use case. And then we run container inside this VM backed by the different COEs. So this one is done by Magnum. Magnum install Kubernetes on Nova VMs, and then it runs container application on those VMs. So uh, this basically shows like to run containers on OpenStack, how can, uh, what all uh, projects are needed to give support for running containers on OpenStack. So this example shows like we need to have a COE or a container runtime tool, maybe Docker, Kubernetes, or any other tool that can run on either VM or a bare metal node. And then 
uh, we need some project that can provide us the API to run our container applications on those compute hosts. So Zone provides you the API to run your containers on this compute host. So after we run our uh, containers, there are several things which we need to um, uh, for our containers. For example, uh, Keystone is used for authentication of the, for example, Zone API or any other project which we need authentication for. And then we you uh, maybe we would we need image. Uh, we need image for our container, so we can either use the Docker Hub or Glance today in uh, Zone that provides you uh, support for managing container images as well. And then we can also provide uh, container volumes that can be done by using Cinder and Fuxi as well. Uh, and then uh, we do need container network resources for our containers. We might want some communication between two containers or a container and a VM. So that is done by Courier today. And Courier leverages uh, the Neutron API to manage all the network resources for container. And finally, we can have a monitoring tool for monitoring our uh, containers as well, like Celometer, but we don't know which project is suitable for containers as well today uh, on for containers on OpenStack. So this generally shows like how, what are all the projects that we can use to uh, enable containers on OpenStack. So second one is the Zone basics. So I'll start with like the introduction of Zone, what is Zone, and then go a little bit in detail about what are other uh, projects which we have integrated with, how does the Zone API looks, and what are all the features in Zone. So Zoon is an OpenStack project that manages container on OpenStack infrastructure. It provides you the API to run your containers on today on bare metal nodes. So we have uh, a, and that is backed by Docker runtime tool today. And then we also integrate with other OpenStack services like Keystone for authentication, Neutron Courier for providing the network for our containers. Glance for managing the images. Horizon, uh, we do have Horizon UI plugin for Zone. We use Heat for orchestration of container. There is a Zone resource in Heat, which you can use to run complex application that can be that can compose multiple containers that can run your microservices inside it. And we have support for OpenStack client also. And Nova, we don't today do not support Nova, but maybe in future we would want to run our containers on VM also. So we have, we will be supporting Nova for that as well. Placement API. So uh, we today have a very simple scheduler in zone which we use to uh, launch, host our containers on any compute host based on some filters. So we don't want to do that. So after this placement API is ready, we will be using it for um, mm, scheduling our containers on different hosts. For telemetry, uh, we are not sure what which project we will be using now. And Swift, we can use to store some metadata for about containers. So these are like lined up uh, project which we may want to integrate with Zone in future. So uh, this example shows like how are you running uh, containers using Zoon on OpenStack infrastructure? So the first uh, diagram shows like you have a neutron network where you uh, uh, you have an application, let's say for example, uh, uh, in ex which need to run a web server and a DB. So before containers or Zoon, we used to launch, uh, launch our web server on one Nova VM and the DB on the another host. Uh, on the another VM host, but that is not very um, like resource. Uh, this is very resource extensive uh, way to do that. So we can run this lightweight services inside containers. So today with Zone, we can do that, 
and we can run this uh, microservices inside containers. So we just have to create for, in this example, we create two containers. One will run our web server and another will run the uh, DB. Or we can run the DB because maybe, for example, it, it, is, it needs lots of storage, so we can use DB. Based on different use cases, we can do this kind of combinations. So uh, in this diagram, we have our web, uh, web server running in a container, which is a very lightweight uh, service, so we don't need to run it inside the VM. And then we are running our DB in a Nova VM. Because we support courier, so both VM and containers are on the same neutron network, so the communication between this web server and DB is possible using the courier network. So this is the list of zone APIs which we support. Uh, we support all the CRUD operations for container, like you can create, uh, delete, list, update, the containers and other than that we do support uh, various other APIs like you can retrieve logs of a container, execute a command, command inside a container and even you can attach uh, to a container and then you can uh, run your commands inside container in an interactive mode. And then there are all, uh, other APIs also we have not listed it down here. So these were a few of the APIs which are really important for containers, so we list a few of them. So this, is, this example shows like how can you use the Zoom CLI to run your containers. So first we are searching the image like Docker search Ceros, and then Zoom run Ceros and the command. This command will create a container and then it will start it. So in this example, we are pinging Google four times, so you can, after this container is created, you can see the logs and see that uh, uh, our container has pinged Google four times. So these are the list of some APIs which we support in Zone. Uh, the next command is enter into a container. So there are ways to uh, attach to a container. For example, Zone attach container. So you'll get a, an interactive mode using uh, which you can use to run your containers. And uh, to run, for example, the second example shows you can open a shell in your container in an interactive mode and then run your bash commands on that shell. So now, uh, like, we wanted to show you a real example where Zoom actually provides some values, like we should be able, two containers should be able to communicate because we launch single services inside a container and they should be able to communicate so that we have a complete application running. So this example shows you like we have two containers. We create first container that is the MySQL uh, database uh, uh, container and we set some environment variables like the root user, password, and the image which we are using is the MySQL latest. After this command, we'll have a container uh, running, uh, container running MySQL server. After that, we create the second container, which is the WordPress server. So we have to, uh, we have to provide the IP of our MySQL server, like where our MySQL server is running. So you can see in the example that we have provided the WordPress DB host, that is the MySQL IP. You can get this IP uh, in Zoom list, or you can say Zoom show the name of the container. So you'll get the list of uh, addresses for, our, for the container. And you provide that IP in this uh, second command. After that, uh, you have a running application where WordPress server has access to the MySQL server. Being, it is possible because both are running on the same network and they have uh, communication possible between them. Yeah, so this is the same example, just using the heat orchestration tool. So we are not doing the orchestration. Heat is the project which is doing the orchestration for us. So you can use heat for running complex application on OpenStack infrastructure using the zone resource. The zone resource is called OS zone container. And in this example, you can see that we are creating two resources. The one is the DB, and the another one is the WordPress uh, uh, resource. 
this is the same as the first example. The first resource is our MySQL server, and the second resource is our WordPress uh, uh, server, which has access, uh, which knows the IP uh, where our DB resource is running. You can see the environment variable WordPress DB host. We are getting the address of our DB resource. So after this, we'll have a stack which, uh, with two containers um, that has communication between them. And this is how you can run complex applications using heat in OpenStack. So now Hongbin will uh, dive into more details about the zone internals. Thank you. Thanks, Natori. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is the architecture of Zoom. And Zoom have two components. The first one is the Zoom API. The second one is Zoom Compute. The Zoom API is for exposing the REST interface to the end users. And the end user send a request. The Zoom API is dispatched the request to the Zoom Compute. The Zoom Compute is the component that is do the actual processing. And it does something, for example, to put down the image from the image repository and to create a neutron resource and to run the containers, for example. So right now, Zoom have, by default, the Zoom can create a container by image, which can be located in the Docker hub. And this is the default behaviors. And, but as an alternative, you can specify the location of the image from the graphs. And what you need to do is to package the container image and upload, upload it to the graphs as the tarboard so that when you create a containers, you add another option. Let's say the image driver, that is GANs. Then the request go through the Zoom API to the Zoom Compute. The Zoom Compute will call the API of the GANs to pull down the image to the host. And then the second thing is we use the neutrons for the for network the containers. This requires the Zoom Compute to before to create a container, we need to talk to the neutron to verify everything is fine and what is the information of the networks and to, to create all the necessary the resource from the neutron. For example, to create a neutron pod for each container. And then after that, we will call the API of the dockers. And we require that the queries to be set up as the as a Docker networking drivers so that the Docker can at the runtime call the API of the queries and query is responsible to connect the container to the neutrons. And all the communications is via REST API and secured by the keystone. And this is the typical deployment of the Zoom. And as other open source service, we can divide it the node into a control node and a compute node. The Zoom API is supposed to be deployed in a control node, and that is along with other open source control planes components, for example, the Keystone and Neutron servers. And the compute node is the node that is running the containers, so that the Zoom compute is, should be running in each node that is run the containers as an agent. And the query is required to running in each of the compute node because the query is the drivers for the for the dockers. And then there should be a neutron agent that is in this in each of the compute node that is controlled by the neutron control plane to manage all the virtual switch that is in this node. And this is the sample sequence to create the containers. So it start by the clients to send a request to the Zoom API to create, give me a containers. And the Zoom API will, based on the, the specification of the container, for example, how many CPU, how many memories, it will select the host that is to run these containers. And the Zoom API will return and uh, respond, send a 202 respond, and at the same time, the Zoom compute will continue to create these containers. And uh, the setup is, is the several steps. And the first step is to talk to the neutrons to give me a networks, the neutron networks that the container will create from these networks. And then we will talk to the API of a 
dockers to create a docker networks, which is basically a representation of the neutral networks. And the docker will actually call the queries to actually create the networks and the query returned. And then the Zoom compute will talk to the Docker API again to create the containers and then connect the container to the networks. And the Docker will call the queries to do the neutron pod bindings. So that given the neutron pod, I bind to the to the to the to connect it to the neutron networks. This this internally they are doing several step that is very complicated. So but in general they Basically, what the important step is to create the WAN pairs and plug, it, plug an endpoint of the WAN pairs to the neutron switch and plug another endpoint to the network LAN space of the containers so that the containers can have the IP address of the, that is provided by the neutrons. And I'm going to talk about the other things. The first thing I want to list is this is the features that we already provided. First, we have the API that is designed for the containers. And we manage all the hosts that is running the containers, but the end user don't need to worry about that. We manage everything and hide the complexities. And we are fully compatible with the uh, Keystone multi tenancy models. And that means each container you create is isolated by the keystone tenants. And we fully integrate with the neutrons which support multiple image repositories. And the most important part is material this mention is we integrate with HIT. So that it allow you to orchestrate containers with any open set resource such as virtual machines and, and the neutrons. And you can set up a very advanced topologies and put one of them in the containers. That is totally possible. And then we have the horizon integrations and Sue will show a demo later uh, about the dashboard in the horizons. And then we integrate with the OpenStack client. And this is the roadmap that is based on the feedback from the communities, but perhaps it's not fixed, we can still discuss this, but this is the list that is according to the feedback. And so first, right now what, what we are already support is to run the Docker containers in the bare metals, which is a, basically a compute node that is already set up by the cloud administrators. So in the future, we are planning to run the container is not only in the bare metals, but in the VMs or even the COEs, for example, Kubernetes. And perhaps we, but perhaps the Kubernetes we are, so for the COE parts, we are still debating is a good idea, good idea or bad idea, but we can continue the discussion and we will see in the latest. And then we are planning to support the additional container runtime. So right now, we decide the architecture that's not only for Docker's. We are, we are, we are decide the architecture that is maybe in the future it's very easy to add an additional container runtimes. And we are working on the Cinder integrations. And if this, this feature is implemented, we are expect to support the stable containers. And then we are going to support a group of containers that is possibly very similar to the Docker Compose or the Kubernetes pod. That is to group a set of containers that is highly coupled to each other and we manage them as a unit. And then we are planning to integrate with the placement API and so that we can leverage the schedulers to do the container scheduling. And, and the other feature we are planning to support is to keep the container alive and monitoring the, do a snapshot of the containers and do a coda of the containers. And the several things is the, the scope of the, this project. We try to limit the scope of the, this project and what to work with. But for, uh, but we, we also want to work with the other open set project to collaborate with them to achieve a bigger scope. But 
we are not going to we are we are not going to do the obstructions and for example and but we are going to integrate with heat to do the obstructions and we are not going to do the COE provisioning, but if you want to do that, you can consider the cargo or the magnum projects. We are not going to, we are target for the application control, uh, application containers, but if you want to run the system containers, you can consider other NOAA world drivers such as NOAA LXD. And what we are not going to do is to build the containers from the, build a container image from the source code, but you can use a solemn to do that. And, and yes, so this is the comparison for Zoom to other technologies. So for example, doc, we, are po we are possibly very similar to the Nova Docker that is to run a container in the compute node. But the, diff the major difference is we are not limited by the Nova APIs. So what Nova Docker is actually a node driver that is for the Novas and allow the NOAAs to manage the Docker containers. But we are provide our own APIs that is designed for the containers and we won't be limited by the API of the compute. And compared to Kubernetes, um, we are focused on totally different use case and Kubernetes advanced, is very advanced too, that is designed for the, for the application that is very complex and very powerful and that need a very uh, com complex topologies and you could use a Kubernetes to do that. But Zoom is a very simple tool that to manage the containers, but we don't do the obstructions. And, but right now we are looking at the possib possibility to integrate with the Kubernetes. So you can use both together. So this is the community of the Zoom projects, and you can see there's the community is diverse. And there's, if one of the company that is stop supporting this project, the project is still going to survive because it's supported by many companies. And, and then Sue will show a demo. are seeing that multi desktop on Ubuntu VM. Uh, this VM has HTML based presentation player powered by Review.js. Uh, it contains static HTML, style sheet, and JavaScript files, and the files are lo local on VM. <coughs> the presentation player is customized to load its contents from uh, external markdown file. The markdown content should be provided by HTTP, but it has not been provided yet. This VM is located on private network for demo project and has IP address 10.0.0.10. Uh, let's provide content for the presentation from container uh, inside private network. You are seeing the UI plugged into Horizon. Uh, this panel is added into project menu for users. Let me create container to provide presentation contents. Presentation contents provider for container name. Uh, in this case, 
I use nginx container image Chris George docker alpine nginx set command uh, bin bash and this container will be start after created also we can specify number of CPU uh, memory size uh, working directory environment variables uh, interactive mode will enable should TTY and standard in and out also enable to access from web console via web socket and uh, labels for the container and create uh, create container request is successfully accepted uh, Zoom UI has actions to operate almost features features of Zoom uh, start, stop, restart, pause, and pause, send execute command, send kill signal delete container will be created and started soon uh, next uh, set contents of presentation using console uh, create web directory and create contents file in markdown using printf command then run nginx uh, nginx has started and to co confirm network settings for this container change tab to overview to serve nginx uh, 443 and 80 ports are exposed and we can see this container has IP address as 10.0.0.8 please remember the IP address uh, 10.0.0.8 for this container In the network panel, we can see ports for router 10.0.0.1, DHCP 10.0.0.2, and Ubuntu VM 10.0.0.10 in private subnet. After reload this panel, uh, then port for the container will exist. New port exists. Uh, this IP address 10.0.0.8 is same as you saw in the UI. And this port uh, has provided clear driver via neutron. To access this port via HTTP, uh, the rule has already added to default security group for this demo project. Also, ICMP protocols are added and it will allow to access NGX on the container from VM. To confirm networking, let me ping between VM and container each other. Container IP address is 10.0.0.8 and VM's IP address is 10.0.0.10. Ping each other. Change view to container. At first, ping to VM from container using console. Ping. Five time to VM ten zero zero ten. I got response from VM. And 
change to VM. Next, uh, ping to container from VM using terminal. Ping five time to container. Ten zero zero eight. Cut less one from container. So now we confirmed networking between VM and container by ICMP. Before accessing container from VM via HTTP, let's watch access log for NGINX on container. Uh, switch view to console of container. Using tail command watch access log for NGINX. If the NGINX will be accessed, the new access log will be added here. Let's change to VM, and it's time to access container from VM to load the markdown contents for this presentation player. Now load contents from container 10.0.0.8 and play presentation. Okay. Finally, the presentation player got contents from container. Uh, that's all for from me, uh, ah, at last, we can confirm the HTTP access in the access log for NGINX. It's time. Yeah, thanks everyone. Yeah, so we are running out of time, so uh, I'm gonna stop here. If you have question, you can. Talk to me offline. Yeah.